And okay, so are you seeing my screen okay? Yes, sir. And just let me know if the text get too small uh, because I'm using a new monitor now. It's a little bit wider than the old one. So my appear things might become a bit smaller, but later on will be easier when we need to and say show both the slides and the code when we do the demo. And okay, and so today is the I think the second week we talk about uh, Express, and last week we talked about mostly middleware, and this week we're going to talk about routing, which is another big part of the Express framework. And also we will talk a little bit about the fetch. So the fetch is the part which is not on the server, but happens on the client side. So this is how you get data from the backend. So again, the fetch is something new. It's replacing the old one, which you probably have done is the XHR or the XML HTTP request or AJAX. So this is a new one. So that's the one you need to use for the next coursework. Okay. Uh, Okay, and so this is the outline. So we're going to first talk about what is routing and different features in the routing that you can use. And then we're going to talk a little bit about user routers to split up, split up your apps. So the routers is different from routing, even though they're similar in names and they work similarly. The routers is only necessary when your apps get really big, might not be necessary for your coursework. And then we're going to talk a bit more about serving static files again. And this time we're going to use another feature built in, in the and Express itself, which allows you to and serve st static files with less line of code. And also we're going to introduce a slightly different, more complex use cases. For example, you might have several folders for static files and you can, depends on which folder people ask, and you can serve the files from there. And this is where you can use routing. And lastly, we're going to talk about the fetch. And so, as I mentioned, this is about getting data in the front end. So, when you, for example, your app needs to get the less information from the database which is stored on the server, then that's where you need to use fetch. We're going to cover what fetch is and how to use it. Okay. And. Uh, so, and firstly, very quickly, and last week we were mostly talking about the middleware, and this week we're going to focus on route. And these are two kind of maybe two most important components of Express. And so the main difference is that middleware runs in parallel. So you get the request, it always goes through the first middleware. Basically, the first middleware appears in your code, and then after it finishes, it goes down to the second middleware. And then after that finishes, if you have said the word, middleware, it goes there until the end. So there is a possibility, say maybe the second middleware would decide to stop and send a response back, that's possible. <coughs> but always these are will be run in sequence in like a one after another. And in that sense, the route works differently and you have multiple routes. And uh, you, I think in most cases only one will be run depends on the request. So the user might request the home page and it may go to the first route and the user may request to say and retrieve some data from say the list of the class information and it goes to route two. And the user request may be to save the user order and then go to route three. So it's very rare again. So it, almost always the route will be run in parallel or in a brown tree fashion, that means only one will be run depends on the user request. So that's the main difference. Okay, and let's talk a little bit more about actual routing. And so let me get this one out. So this is what a request looks like. So if you want to retrieve um, a page or a URL from a website, in this case will be an example.com slash Olivia, the actual uh, HTTP request would look like something like this. So you have 
get, which is kind of action, and then the actual pass, and finally the version of the HTTP request. So there's different versions, and you have, say, HTTP, you have HTTPS, which is the encrypt version, and now it's also HTTP2, which is a newer version of HTTP, allows compression. Okay, and then if you break this down, you have a verb, in this case, which is get, the URI, okay, this does not include the actual site URL, only the path that you want to get, and from the server, and finally, the HTTP version. Okay, and then your routing or the express would decide which routes to go to, mostly depends on the verb and the UI, the path, okay? And so, for example, you might want to say, go, you want to get to the about me, either the page or the request, and then you will, the route will depend on the mess, sorry, the verb or the method and the path, decide which route it goes to. And then, so for example, when you use a post, which is a different method or action, and you have followed by a pass, then that will trigger a different route based on the post, the, the, the methods and the pass. So even for the same pass, you can have multiple and verbs or actions or methods, and they can trigger a different code. For example, you can have a post, and they have a router that responds to post slash new user, or you can have a different post which would re respond to say get slash new user. So these will be two different routes. Okay, and uh, so now I have a simple example of using Express, creating some route, okay? And I'll explain this first and then try to create that uh, in the code. Or maybe I'll do that in the code as I, uh, maybe as I explain. So to do that, I'm gonna start my Visual Studio code. Give me a minute. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, let me create a new folder called demo. And is the text too small? Or are you still okay to see it? So it's fine now. Okay, okay. And so this is kind of server we want to create. And so I created a new folder called demo. And uh, we, as usual, we need to create a Node.js project in it. And so I'm gonna just do it here in my command line. Okay, uh, I'll go into the demo directory. Currently will be empty. And I do npn init. So this will initialize uh, the uh, Node.js project for you. I'm gonna call my um, package or the project called route demo and version description entry points. Okay, it called index.js and just use the same. Okay, and so now I have a file now created here and it's called a package.json with information there. And for this one, we need express. And so usually you have to do npm install and express, but I think I might install it globally and we'll find out. If not, we're going to come back here and try to and install the express package, which is needed. Okay, and the next thing is we'll need to, to actually write these code in the file. As I already seen here, the main file called index.js, so I'm going to use that here. Just going to call this file index.js. Okay, and uh, I'll say var express equal to 
require express. So and we have seen done this many times before. And so that requires express package. And this will give you an error if it doesn't exist. And you need to start an instance of express like this. So I just say express and bracket essentially run the function. And now it's referred to the app itself. Okay, and this is now actually where the routing starts. Okay, so previously we used middleware and we always use app.use. So that's an indication saying this is a middleware, not a route. And where you say app dot something, which is not used, in this case use get. That means this is a route for only for get request. So the get request is a default request. When you say you get a, want to load a web page, if you only just type in the URL, it will be sent by default as a get request. Actually, I don't think you can send other requests just by typing a URL. But basically, if anything that's not a get will be ignored, that's important. And then here is the pass that it will be response to, and will be respond to. So this one would only respond to slash, if you say slash Olivia, okay. And then this part will be the actual function just says, if user sent a get request to the pass slash Olivia, what I will do. So here it will send a simple response and send a message back, yeah. And so I can say app.get, and then the pass is important. Olivia, and okay, and then you do the, uh, how is this different? Function statement, yep. I don't need name, and I would have a request, and response. Okay, again, so we mentioned before, um, exactly what name called here is not important. But the first one would store the request object, which is everything that user sent from the client side. And the response is the object that you're going to send back. So you might not send back straight away in the route. You might just add it as something to the response. But in this case, we actually send it back. So we just say response dot send. So that would end the request handling. Welcome to Olivia's. Oops. Okay, so you can see now, and um, I need to use a apostrophe s, which is actually the same as this one I used here. So that. So in this case, if you need a single quote inside your sentences, and you have to use double quotes to start then it will recognize this properly. Okay, and then this is an additional middleware. It's just in case if you did not have a page or did not send the correct pass. And uh, if you don't have this, it will just not doing anything. And I'll just start with that. And for the simplest one, you can just say app.listen. So that's all you need to do. Now we have a very simple express server and it has uh, one route which respond to get and the path is slash Olivia. That's the only chance you're gonna get any response. And uh, okay, maybe just do the other ones just can demonstrate. Okay. As I said, again, this is a middleware, not a route. So it will always run. And again, I can do function and request and the response. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, what's the main difference between uh, middleware and uh, um, routing? Oh, as I showed in the previous slides, say middleware, you come a little bit late, always run one by one in sequence route only one get picked, depends on the request and the message. Thank you, right, thank you. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, so this one sets the status to 404, which is usually means and file not found. So this way it's a bit nicer. So you always get some response. Okay, let's see if we can um, run this one now. Uh, remember, so I didn't install Express, so it might give me errors. They can't find um, Express. And as okay, we also talked about last time. So a preferred way is using npn start rather than saying node index.js in case you have more complex starting. Uh, okay, I have a missing script start. Okay. Okay, I'll just be a bit lazy now. Uh, okay, and so instead I'm still using node and you can see the error message here, it says, and um, cannot find, find module express. So the module is still not installed. Okay, I'm gonna do this now. And npm install express. So I didn't install it globally, so I need to install it again. Takes a few seconds to install this one. So if you install it globally, then you don't need to um, reinstall it every time. Uh, so I'm gonna run and um, note index.js again. Okay, so now there's no error and there's no response here either because when we start the server, we didn't do anything. It just say start listing on 3000. And now if I go to my page. If I type in localhost 3000, hope you can see it's very small. Ah. Okay, and this is you get error. It says reference error response is not defined. And if you look at my code, here I say response dot status four thousand a uh, four four send this one. The reason is because here I didn't type response. I used res instead of response. So this is really what it should be like. Okay, and now I change my code. I save the changes, and to make it effective, I need to restart the server. So even if it didn't crash you need to restart the server to take it out, to make the change into effect. So I'm gonna do this again. Okay, uh, I'm gonna type again, localhost 3000. Oops. First okay. I meant to restart or status, the stats 404. Yeah. Line, line nine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, line so again, since this is the case, I misspelled. So it should be status, not stats. Okay, I save the change again. Need to break. Okay, I think this is the other thing we talked about last time. Uh, is instead of you node, you can use node mo, which is node monitor, which will automatically detect any changes you made to the code and restart the server. Again, I don't think I have that installed. All right, okay, I did install it globally, so you can see. And uh, now it's start looking a little bit different, but it's starting now. Okay, let's try it. Hopefully the third time is lucky. Okay, and they give you a response, say page not found. Because, and if we type in now, slash Olivia, okay, it's very small, you probably can't see it. And there's no way I can increase the font size for the address bar. At least I'm not aware of. And you can get this message says, welcome to Olivia's homepage. Okay, so that means when that's correct, it matches the get method and the path, then it will rerun the functions here, inside here. Okay, and later on, when we're actually doing this properly, we're gonna use the route, it's mostly used for database, and it can have, say, get or put method for, say, retrieving and uh, return or saving data. For example, if you want to get, say, the information about the user, you can say get forward by some username or ID, or if you want to save a, um, say purchase, and you say you use a put method with a certain um, pass, and then that will trigger saving the data into the database. 
an intellectual function, you will say connect to the, the database, either retrieve from a certain table or save the data to a certain table with a particular query. Okay, uh, that's that in terms of the simple example. So that's how the routes working. And usually you will have quite a few, depends on different methods and different routes, and it will do different things. That's the idea of a route. Why is it doing? Okay, and so that's kind of introduction of routing is, what routing is. Now we're gonna, gonna go to the next part, which actually talk about some more advanced features in routing. Um, not that particularly difficult or developed. This is something quite handy, useful you use. Okay, and the first thing is you can grab parameters in the routes. So um, imagine if you need to make a website, has lots of users. These users has IDs, which are like a one, two, and three. And then you don't really want to create a route for each user. For example, for user one, you define the route user. And for user two, you define a second route called user slash two and so on. And if you have a 1 million user, you need 1 million of these routes, which is very inefficient. Okay. And so what you do is you define a route and uh, which takes the ID as a parameter. So basically you can have one route for all the users instead of say specifying a particular ID for each route. Okay, and so this might be something gonna look like. Uh, so what you need is a column, okay? So the column indicates what afterwards is a parameter. So you can see in this particular, we have this column and then followed by the user ID. Then it's, then Express knows what to expect is a parameter here, not an actual text string says and um, column user ID. So this is almost like a parameter argumenting function. We expect that there will be some value here. Whereas this part express would and check just to make sure it exactly follows the same URL user sending. Okay. And later on, once user sends some parameter, if you want to get the value, you use the para params or para it's a short for parameters property and it has a own property called request. The parameters object, it has a property called request. The request would include the user ID value. Um, okay, so basically if you see here, here REQ is the request object, which have everything user sent and inside we have this params, which is this params here, which including all the parameters, and then you can use user ID. This user ID has to match this parameter names so you define here, okay? And you might have other parameters, you can have multiple parameters, and you can use params dot other parameters name, and you get that value. And finally, this is 10, that just basically means you put it in the base 10 or decimal format. We talked about you can have binary or hexadecimal, which have 16 digits. This is just, usually you just want the decimal number. Okay. And so if you have some pass like a slash user slash without anything, then this will not be matched and this will not be triggered. Or if you have slash users one, two, three slash posts, so this part would matching this pass or UR, but this one is additional and would fail. So basically this would not respond or would not trigger this route. Okay, and what will trigger is, because here you didn't say what the user ID is, so it does not have to be a number. So you can do this, so now the user ID will be cake or this where the user ID will be horse underscore ebooks or you can put in some numbers there that will also be picked up okay and uh, uh, if you only want numerical values and you need use some logic in the route 
for example, you can do this and then you need to get user ID and afterwards you can do some checking to make sure it is actually a number. Otherwise you send back an error message or something. In terms of enforcing um, the parameters is not something you can do in the route itself. You have to done in your own code. So now we could just add this to our new server or new express backend. Um, we can say app let's get okay and um, so this is the other thing you can see um, user ID we'll come back to this in the second function uh, there's no name the parameters will be request um, Okay, and so this is quite common. So we already had app.get and this is second get. So that means my second route, they both respond to get message and they have different, complete different paths. So they were not interfering each other. Depends on the incoming request path. It will either go here or here or none of them or go back here. Okay. Uh, okay. So in this case, for example, uh, all I do is just send back the user ID. Uh, let's so I can see I'm sending something back, and this uh, I just say the user ID is okay. Remember now we want to send back the user ID. We need to get it from the input or the request object. You say request dot parameters dot user ID. So the important thing to remember here is this user ID has to match this name here. Otherwise, it would not get this value. Okay. What we did here is a bit different from the uh, example, but essentially we sending back whatever the user ID you can get from the user request. Okay, and um, let's see. Okay, uh, so it seems to be still running fine. So we could try this one in the browser now. Okay, and so if I type in 3000 slash Olivia, or just 3000 page not found, and if I type in slash user, and then slash something. And in this case, I'd have it one, two, three, four, five. Oh, you need to add uh, users in oh, the link. Sorry. It's an S, that's right. Uh, it has to be, okay, exactly match the path. So if I here, I said users, and here it has to be users. Wow, you couldn't even see, I'm surprised. Oops. Okay, I got another error. Ah, okay. Uh, it says proper and number 10, maybe response. I don't know if the second parameter has to match with the rest. Rest response. Line number 10. Ah, yes. Yeah, you've got the response, then instead of rest. Yeah. Okay. Well done. Yeah, and restarting. And let's try this again. Okay, It'll work this time. So it says the user ID is one, two, three, four, five. And I can see, I just want to say, you can type in some letters as well. And it just give you back the same, uh, whatever you type. But if you're just typing nothing, only slash, you get page not found because it does not trigger this particular route. And if you type for, and if you have some number, but you have still something, uh, Afterwards, it will still give you page not found error because it still does not trigger or match this string here. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, that's all. That's all we want to discuss now. That's one way. And to get parameters out of the route or the query string. Okay. And besides, you can parameters. There's another way and you can get query arguments. So this is actually quite common. 
So here, the query arguments is additional thing people add onto the end of your URL. Okay, and so for example, if you search JavaScript hyphen seamed burrito on Google, and uh, if it is implemented in Express, and uh, the URL might look like this. So you have this part, which is the Google URL, and then you search question mark. So that's the starting thing. For after that, I'm gonna have my query, and this is the query argument. You have the Q equal to JavaScript dash seems. This is the code for space because we had a space here. This percentage twenty seven and the burrito. Okay, and you can also. This is a bit different than the. Uh, the one which I've seen before in terms of getting parameters, and this is also quite common. And we'll later see how we can get value this value using Express as well. Okay, so uh, here, so if the Google were written Express and the back end handler might look like this, okay, obviously, Google is not uh, written in Express, and so. Because it's again, it's a URL, so it's a get query, and this slash search would match uh, this part here. So that's your kind of keywords for the pass. Okay, and then you have the dot query dot Q. So the dot query is the query object. Okay, uh, so if you remember previously, for this one, we're using the params object inside the request. So that's here is the query object. Again, it's still, it's still part of the request, the bigger object. And we are using dot Q. That's because in the string, we had a question mark and Q equal to something, something, right? And then if you here say something like a query, then you have to be dot query or something. Just make sure those two has to match. And then the value of this will be whatever user typed in after the uh, equation. Oh, sorry. Uh, Q, yeah. Q can be replaced with any letter or it has to be Q for query? No, it has can be any letter. That's what you define. And then you just have to make sure it always used depends on how you define here. Um, okay, again, we can just do a quick example here. And uh, this is our third route now. We're going to get. And this time we're going to do search and function. Request and response. Again, we're going to just do the same. Response dot send. This time, we're going to say the query string is okay. Have using the request object, and then use the query object inside there, and then what dot afterwards is really okay. Let me just say, uh, oh, I don't know. Maybe I use dot text here. So it's, I need to do the same and on my content. So it's going to use to return the text. If I use Q, it's not going to get the information here. So if I go back here, hopefully it's already updated. And this time, I'm going to type in search, okay, and then question mark. And to make the work, I have to use text because that's what I said in the uh, routes here text equal to uh, there's some random text, okay. And you can see now the query string is this, which is what I typed in. But if I say text, in the, as in the examples in the, uh, the slides, I say it's Q equal to this. 
and you can say the query string is undefined because it couldn't find anything or an argument or param uh, argument which start with text. It just says query string is undefined because this part is undefined. Yeah, so hopefully that answers question. So you can define what the text and what actually happens is you can actually have multiple um, query strings. Sorry, not multiple query strings. You can have multiple, how do I call this? Parameters or arguments. And in the query string, you can have Q equal to something. I can't remember now what it is. And, and text equal to something, something. Does this work? Yeah. And I just use the and to join two different um, parameters or query string. One is called Q and the other one is called text. And the here, I'm only looking for the value of text. So it's only give you this one, which is I typed in here, follow the text. You can have multiple ones and you can pass it in your routes here. Oh, okay. Uh, we are very behind. Okay. And uh, looks like I'm planning too much. Okay, so that's the second part. And uh, the next part is you can use router to split your app. So if you remember, route is related to route. Router uh, is related to route, but it's a bit different. And um, so it's used for big backend servers. Obviously, for example, this kind of toy server we have now with 21 lines code, you don't need the router to split a split. But in a proper one, you might have much more. For example, we can have many gets and each gets the actual function itself can be quite complex, not just a one line code itself can have 50, 100 line code. And then you want to, don't want to put everything in that case, you don't want to put everything in the single file and use that's where the router is actually comes in. Okay. Uh, so for example, you can have routers for static files or images, and even that you can have different routes. For example, and then you might have say specific routes for user accounts, chat rooms, forums, account, and so on. So the router is an isolated instance of middleware and routes. So in a sense itself, like a mini server, something like this, you can have a mix of middleware and routes in your site itself, inside it. And uh, yeah, it's sort of like a mini applications or mini servers. So this is like one app. You can break that into smaller mini apps and each perform a different function with its own middleware and routing. Okay. And then each of them will have its own built in app router. Okay. So just to, if you remember, that's the picture from last week that give you a possible examples where you might need a router. And so this is your main express application. This is where you will start the server and then maybe the first router will point to an, a mini app, which is creating the administration panel. That's only for people managing the server. And you have another one, which is starting the API router. So this is all the routes and middlewares for contacting all the requests from a code. So the API is for code to consume, not for users. And finally, you have a different router, which is providing the actual the page, which the user can see in their browser. So this is probably better for even for, for single page applications. This is router would send back HTML and images and so on. And for the router, you might even have different versions. So and it changes, you want to maintain the compatibility with the code or the client, which you wrote written with old API interface. So you want to keep that and you have add new versions and each of these can be a separate router. So this again, so what we're going to do is not going to be this complicated. We'll probably just do something similar to this. So it might not need it for your coursework. Okay. And uh, so to use router, you still use dot use in that sense, it's similar as 
a middleware. For example, we can see, and in this example, so we have this one middleware at the use. And in this case, we did not have any partition, anything to use. We just has the, the event handler. Okay. Whereas if you want to use router, you will put your router names here into a use that router to do something. But you still use the app.use to call a router. Okay. We already mentioned this is when the apps get big. And for smaller one, it'd be a little bit overkill. And so this is a simple file. Uh, just in concern of time, we might not have time to do all of this. Okay. Uh, so this is the like like the main app file or the root main. Uh, I think all these parts we will be quite familiar with from here to here. So it gets the express module or library and you get the pass module, okay? And here is what you need. And you need to require your router and you have to tell where the router file is. In this case, it will be the current directory. I uh, assume the subdirectory called slash routes. And inside we have a file called API router. Okay, and that's how you get to get that part. And then you require this and that you call, give it a name called API router. In a sense, similar to this, right? So you need to require something. This is a module. This is think of like your own customized module and you require it and then give it a name so you can refer or use it later on. Okay. And this is just starting an uh, express instance after you require it. And this is creating the file pass, which is what we did last week. In terms. And then finally is this part. This is we're going to cover a little bit more later on. So this is a different way to serve static files. So you just use express.static followed by the pass to the can usually a subdirectory containing the static files. That's all we need to do. Uh, we will talk about a little bit more about more that more of that later. Okay, but then all you need to do in terms of actually using the router is to do this. You have to say app dot use. So this is the pass that would respond to, and then this is the API router, and this is this one here. Yeah, and so in a sense, and this format here seems like a middleware. You use app dot use. This part is looks like a little bit like the route, because you need to specify which pass would trigger this one, and this is basically specify which of your own router files will be used to handle this. Okay. Uh, Okay, um, so I can add this one here. So for this one, if we want to use a router, we just do have to say app.use. Um, okay, let's slash API and API router. Again, the names can be different. It doesn't have to be that. And I have to put it here instead of say here, because I put it here, it's already end function for never run. And obviously before this, we need something similar to this to load the router. So we have to say my API router is this particularly package. It's like a local package file. Uh, local, it's still called routes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm just using exactly the same as that one there. And then inside this actual file, so you can do a little bit more, which is what we see on the next page. Okay. Um, here um, is exactly the same as a normal express server file, app file, and you require express and do some things. And we're not gonna um, go into actual details here, but just to demonstrate, 
to make this work, we need to create a subfolder first. This one we're going to call the routes. Again, the name you can decide just to match the name you used here. And inside the routes, we need a new file. In this case, will be called API router. Again, um, this is okay so long as it matches whatever the file name you put in here. Okay. Um, okay, in this case, we, we're not going to do anything fancy at all. Uh, we just say, let me see what will be the easiest way to do. Okay, uh, we just we have an express. Uh, we can use something and then app just so we have the express instance but really and we not re we might not even need the express and we just need to send a back a response I think mm. we just say app dot uh use okay i'm gonna now do a very simple middleware all it does uh request and response um what was that uh ah uh, yes our uh, res response dot send this is okay. Let's just say hello from the API router. Okay, and uh, all it does is just sending back a message, nothing fancy, but you can imagine you can put much more complex code here. Okay, as a result, I just need to start the index.js, and if I use slash API in my path, it will automatically goes to here and do whatever I decide in this function. In this case, it's only uh, and only does this line, you send back a response. Oh. Okay, uh, let me see if this would work. slash API. Ah, I think the survey is done. Uh, okay, app crashed. Index .js. So instead of the var app equals express, you need to do express dot router because this is a router, is is not express server. Oh yes, sorry. And this is not express server you, because you want to make the router. It's not because you make oh, the oh, server yes, at the moment. Yeah. And yeah. also you need to do exports. So you need to export the app. So in your index jazz, you know yeah. that this is the route. Uh, that's right. Uh, sorry. Uh, router. Ah, yes, yes, I missed this part. Mm -hmm. API. Uh, finally, yeah, I was thinking about this. And um, so you have to do module.exports equal to API. Okay. So uh, this is for this. Okay. Uh, so that's essentially like the name for your route. And again, as I mentioned, it has to be a router. It can't just do express, which is actual server. And finally, you have to export it. Um, app is not defined. Line four app app use need to API use. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, Okay, yay, finally. If we go back here, 
I'm going to do slash API. Yay. Now we have something, some response. Come back. Yeah. And obviously, you can have more than one routers. And each router can have much more complex than this one. Oops. Uh, well, I decided to come here. OK, and now we can get back to the actual slides. Uh, OK, uh, next part is about serving static files. And we already did it last week. We used these building paths and the file system um, modules or libraries. Building come with the node. And then we created the file path first. So that including whatever for um, the path to your Node.js server file. And this would be the directory name containing the uh, containing uh, the static files. And finally, this will be the actual file name that's included in the request, which you can just get by request of URL. OK, and when we do the file, when we try to serve the file, and you first get uh, this file info object. So if there's any error, you would and return, basically stop this function and you call the next one. Then if the file info is file, you will do res.send file. So this send file is a function from Express, allows you to send the file back. And because you now uh, is sure and the file pass is working, and because, uh, let me see, where did I do the file info? Ah, OK. And the file info is there. So it has to be the um, generated directly using the file pass. Then you can send the files back. And you can do else, dot next. Essentially, say so if this doesn't work, you just call next one as well. OK. And so we can do this uh, a simpler way uh, with just express.static. And so you, so you need these uh, packages. So previously, this one. We don't use um, Express at all. I just use the pass. And actually, we use Express as well. We need the send files. But here, we need Express, pass. Uh, these is more for the server part. So you don't necessarily need it. And this is starting the Express. So this part is actually a little bit different, but doing something quite similar of what this line of code does here. It's just creating the actual pass to the file that you want to serve. And so it says pass.resolve and directed name plus the name of the subfolder, including the static files. So here, you don't include the actual file name yet. So that, that's why it's called a pass. So basically, that's a string including the server uh, pass or URL plus slash public. Okay, And then all you need to do is just to say app.use express.static public pass. Then that will serve all the static files in this public subdirectory. Yeah. And, uh, and then this is one just like a, a kind of error handling. If it didn't find any files, and it will just send back a response, and then you're starting the server. So to do this, uh, so we could say now we have the app. So we just need pass. And then we need to create the static file pass. In this case, it called public pass equal to pass dot resolve. Uh, 
I R so that's the directory. And in this case, the directory I'm going to save in file is called public, which we need to create in a second. And then app dot use. Uh, yeah, okay. Express dot static um, public path. Okay, that's all you need to do. So in theory, it was the starting to save in the files in the public directory. Uh, then let's just quickly uh, create a new directory, uh, call it public. And uh, inside it, we let's create a simple file and call hello with a show. Markdown. Okay. Uh, let's say it has only one file inside there, but that should be okay. And then now, if I type in uh, slash uh, okay in this case so if I just type in a file name it will try to find that file in the public folder and let's try it if it works Okay, um, so the file I created is called hello.md. Not sure if you can see here, but it says hello.md. Okay, and it returns md and actually display the files. And you can put and different files in the public folder, say CSS index HTML, or even say pictures or PDFs. And if we just do this, and it will serve the files. So this is really a less line of code than we had to do last time in terms of serving static files. Okay, we have about half an hour left. Hmm. Okay, uh, so you can also choose which location to serve static files depends on the request URL. And so for example, you might have multiple folders containing uh, static files. You have a public, but maybe have another one called the image, which has all the pictures inside. You don't want to mix that with other, say, index or CSS file. Then you can depend on the URL to decide which one to serve from. And in this case, you can't just as what we did here. Uh, just do app dot use, and you have to use a particular pass to say, okay, for the image, we're gonna choose serving all the files in the image pass directory. So that's what we'll be including this one here. Okay. Uh, so I'm not just in concern of time, and I'm not going to do this, but you can imagine. So essentially this, you need to create a separate, something very similar to this, but a separate uh, route for serving files in a different directory. Um, okay, and so this is say, if you have two different directories and you want to know which one to serve at when, and you just use different paths to differentiate between them. So you can say, if you have slash public, then you serve the files in the public path, which is this subdirectory. If you say slash image, you serve the files from the image subdirectory. Yeah. Okay, um, so sometimes you may want to send static files and with a route. And for example, you might want to send the user's profile pictures if 
is it requested? And in this one, the user ID will be a parameter in the request URL. And then to, to do this and assume we have a function called get portfolio photo, which is this one here. And you can do something like this. And so first you say app.get. So that's the route we'll be talking about. This is for the get route. And this will be the pass. And you can see the ID is here in the middle. That's completely okay. This will be the ID. And the actual function would be request, sorry, and result was send file and get portfolio photo. So that's a function. It takes in the parameter, which is this request.params.id. So essentially that give you whatever ID here. And this is supposed to be a function in your, and say index.js or server.js file, which will retrieve the correct file. So for example, it might send a specific file in say user photo directory, and the name is always called user photo followed by hyphen id dot jpg or something. Yeah. And the, the send file is just to send the file back, which makes it much easier compared to what you need to do in Node. Okay, yeah, it looks like we're gonna be doing okay in terms of time. And now we come to the last part, uh, which is about uh, communicating or retrieving data from the server and using fetch. Okay, and just come back to this picture again. So, so far, uh, we talked mostly about this part in terms of node, one lecture and two lecture on the middle where I'm using express. And then we, I think we almost finished uh, the middleware part, but we haven't quite covered this part yet. So how do we get data? from the database to get back. So that's the further thing we need to talk about. But today we're gonna to talk a little bit about this part. So how do you front, get front end, get data from the server or the middleware? So you can remember, say the front end never talk to the database directly. Okay, so now we just assume the server will always get the data, will look after any communication with database. So we don't worry about this part yet. We just look at this part. Okay. And so the old way is say, whenever you need to display a page, you send a request to the server and the server will send the page back to you. And the problem is this, if you need only to update a small part of the page, you need to reload the entire page again. So that's very inefficient. So let's say, and this is my page. And if I click to something, and so turn something off. For example, I turned editing off and this, I have to retrieve anything, everything from the back server, we render the page. And if it's a long page, it will be slow and inefficient. And this is where Ajax come in. So Ajax, which allows you to update part of the page without reloading the entire page. And this is, can be done with either the XML HTTP request, or recently, more recently, the fetch API, which is what we're going to be using in this module. And the way they work very similar, and the fetch is just an, a more modern version of how to do these things. So Ajax is actually popular, popularized by, say, Google Maps. So basically, when you open the Google Map and you start to zoom in or zoom out, and you don't want the entire page to reload. So it will only reload certain parts. For example, if I and zoom in a bit now, and you can see not the entire page will reload, only the part needed will be reloaded. In this case, yeah, it display first and start reading, loading the other information and then we're starting to disappear, uh, appear on the page. 
Okay, uh, so this is kind of like a quick revision of how the XML HTTP request would work, or X, I'll probably just call them H, XHR, will be faster. And so you should have done this in your second year module. And I hope that's correct. So to do that, you first need to create an instance of XML HTTP request, and we might call it request. And then you open the request by starting a request. You need to set the method. Okay, so it can be get, will be the default one, and you can also do post, push, and delete, and some other things. But we just use mostly going to be used get for now. And this is a URL where you want to contact or send the request to. Okay, and then here we set up the request. We know where the destination of the web request is going to and the message and actual content in the request itself. What it actually requests to will be stored in the, uh, the request body. Here it just says first says response type. And this, this is where actually the response you can get, get from the server. So it says I'm a respect, res, expecting a text back from the server. And this is not necessary. And text will be by default. But if, for example, if you're expecting an image or PDF files, you need to set the response type. Otherwise, I uh, might not be able to handle it properly in the browser. OK, and that's all quite simple and easy. The difficult part is about asynchronous communication in the sense. And if you get try to get some data from a server, you might not get the response immediately or ever. For example, it's a large file and it might take a while for the file to come back. But say for JavaScript by default, they were not going to wait for that. It will just continue running the code after that. That potentially can have problem. And the other thing is sometimes, for example, the server is offline, so we'll never get a response back. Okay, and that's gonna having issues causing errors in your code and you need to handle it properly. So all these are called asynchronous communication. Okay, and then the the XHR or the, the old Ajax and allows you to just using this unload event handler, which basically says I'm gonna wait and only do the things here after I get the files back. Because as I already mentioned, you do not get the response back immediately by default. The JavaScript will keep, will keep going. And so this is what happens. You say the request dot unload, and then say this message only runs after you get the request back. So it will wait. So if it takes, uh, I don't know, and a few seconds, and this will wait for a few seconds. If you never get a response back, this will never run. Okay, once you set this all up, you say request.send. So this is actually sends the request to the server. And then it will wait for the response. And if there is one, it will do this, whatever in the dot unload. Okay, and so this is what it looks like all together. So you first create a new XHR object. You open the request, setting up the method and the URL. And in this case, because we're expecting and the page come back or a text, so we not, don't need to send any other information in the actual request body. We expect something text coming back, and it will just display that text and in your alert box. Okay. <clears throat> and so this is something, and you potentially will run into. Uh, you might get something say. Access to this is blocked because this cross original request, uh, cross original, what is our resource request or something. Okay, so that's a default thing. And you often, let me see. Ah, oh, yes, we have a little bit of time. So maybe, maybe let me try to. 
Ah, uh, do one very quickly. I think I need one anyway. Um, so really this file, um, I'm just calling index.html, which has nothing. And all that it does is having a request to send the request to the server. I'm gonna just copy the code here now, just to save a bit of time as we are a little bit late. And what this one does is I have an HTML file, it has some script, it will be run, and it runs a local XML HTTP request, AJAX request to try to get contact this. So we know, and if you, for the, our server, if you only type this, localhost 3000, what you get is page.found. So what we expect is we're going to get a text back, and as a result, you have alert box, which with the text, in, um, page not found in that. Okay, and if we run this H or open this HTML file in the browser, uh, it didn't get anything, and uh, nothing happens. And if you do an inspect, hope we can see. This is what the problem is. Okay. It says access to extra NP request at this one from this original has been blocked. Okay. And essentially, these things, these are from two different servers. You are not allowed to access the information from a different server, basically. So, what you need to do is to add this to your server. So, you need to allow control, so access control allow origin, and then star basically means you allow any origin to access your, uh, to access this particular server. Okay, so this is something that you need to put in your server file. Um, so, okay. For example, most likely, and um, when that request will send, it will trigger this middleware. In the sense, it's not going to go to any of these routes because we are not going, say, search or Olivia or anything else. Just here, so I can just put it here. I'm going to set the header, say I'm allowing access control, and then I'll send a message or and I send something else. Okay, yeah, and then now you can see it's automatically refreshed because the live server, and you can see now you get the response back and always the message says page not found. Okay, so basically if you get that access cross original error, you just need to set the header to allow access from different places. Um, okay, still have a bit more. Okay, now we come to the, the last part, which is the fetch. So fetch does very similar things as the XML HTTP or the XHR, the old way. It's just the syntax a little bit different. And actually it's a modern replacement and for the old way. And uh, <coughs> it's meant to make the asynchronous HTTP request a bit easier. Okay, the same example as before. So the one we did here, this one, and can be replaced with this. Okay, and we're gonna break this down a little bit. So, so first is this one, and you say fetch a location. So in this case, we didn't set get. You can set type of method, but you can say Nothing as well, so which just give you default, which is get. Let me just comment this part out. Okay. 
and we can say fetch and even oh, okay i'll be nice and typing http as well uh, localhost 3000 so this is and uh, this gives you it tells it where you want to contact yeah so the equivalent of this one the equivalent of this line of code here and you don't need the send so that means you don't need this one at the end it will happen you don't need to explicitly say send okay and then you have the dot then so this is the equivalent of the unload and it returns something called promise okay the promise is something very important something new and it's a little bit difficult to explain so because as we said and um, these requests are asynchronous they do not always happen so the promise means means if it happens what do you do or say it to say i promise something will happen and if it happens what do you do that's kind of idea behind the pro promise okay and so the promise would resolve the response sent back from the server so essentially you don't have to have how do i say you can use promise just as anything a variable an object and in the javascript code there's no nothing different but just be aware that's a response from an asynchronous request that becomes promise and then you need to use dot then to run the follow-up code so the dot then is similar to the dot unload in the request in the sense it just to ask javascript to wait only run whatever inside until it's get the response back don't run it straight away so you have wait and uh, so instead of using dot unload you use dot then okay so that's why you have this one here so you contact an, a server and then you say dot then and inside is what you're going to do usually it's a function you will do something with the response you get and that's what this response is that's an object is and includes whatever you get from back from the server. Okay. And in this case, you get this response object and you say response dot text. Okay. This is very specific in this case, because we want to turn whatever response I get into a text. Okay. And itself returns the promise. Uh, going to function response okay and for the response i'm gonna get again what you call here is not critical but just make sure this one and this one are the same and it always contains a response object okay in this case i'm gonna call a method of the response object is called text itself is also asynchronous so then you need to do another then to wait that's done usually that's quite quick and but still it's because it's a promise you have to use dot then and inside this and um, dot then you can say whatever you want to do with the text itself and in this case, you, or, or just do alert box, alert the text. Oh, sorry, I can't just do alert text yet. And um, you have to say, this is my returned function. So this is the promise, which will return something. I'm going to call it text, and then I'll alert text, basically display the text. And you can see this page is running now, and it gets another box. Uh, that box shows page not found, and you click OK. Yeah. 
So, why well, I have an error message here? Line twenty. What is the in in this case? What is the text? Oh, Something. okay. The text is this thing. Uh, so basically, the text oh, okay. is your response, and the response will be whatever the server sent back. And you do this part, just further first convert that into a text, and this one will be referred to whatever the result is returned by there. So you could say um, you can say result, and then you just say alert result. It's the same. It doesn't matter. It's, this is the outcomes or the the result of run this function. And if you run here, um, I will still give you the same message. Yeah. Okay. And actually, this error is actually not an error. That's purely because on the server, uh, we set the status as forty four for the request, and then the server would and um, Think that's an error. For example, if I just say send, let's change the text message to something else. Hello from the server. Oh, we still get. Uh, let me clear first, and um, and then rerun. Yeah. You can see now there's no more error. Uh, oh. And then you can see the message here is different. Okay, and that's all it is. So basically, instead of writing this one, and um, you can write in this one. And uh, let me try. Maybe you can even get away without the response dot text because that adds a little bit extra line of code. Say for example, if I don't do this and I do directly a alert, and this time I just alert the response directly. This will be a more equivalent of this one. So for here, you don't have to change that into text. And I just say alert response. And you can see it give you ah and it give you a say an object response. You, you just need to run response.text, then it will do it. Uh I doubt. Let's try. Uh text <laughs> function. Yeah. So that if we do text function, yeah. And it's the same as what we do here, and just not using the promise at all. That's the only difference. Yeah, you can see this is object promise. Essentially, that just because the text itself returned a promise, then you have to use dot then to resolve that promise. You can't just say dot x directly. You can't use it. Otherwise, that's what you get. Okay, and so you, you can't skip the part. So you do have to uh, and you do have to uh, using the dot text and then resolve the promise it created before you get the result. And uh, yeah, and slightly cube cum uh, cumbersome just purely because we have to use dot text. Otherwise, the equivalent is you have a response and you can do something with it will be the same here. Less than a line of code. Okay, and uh, ah, and I also have slides about fetching JSON object. So if you know you're gonna get a JSON back, and instead of say response dot text, you can say response dot JSON. Again, this is a promise, and then you can say the function for whatever the you then decide what you do want with the JSON object. So. In this case, just if you know the response is JSON, you say response.json, then. So this can be quite useful. For example, when you're actually talking to the database, you know the return back, for example, it will be a list of, say, lessons stored as a JSON array. Then these kind of function becomes more useful. 
Okay, and this is probably the last slide. Yeah, and just to give examples, and when you get the JSON object back, and you can actually and start using that in your view object. For example, as I said, if you can get a list of the lesson or even just one lesson object. Okay, and the only thing new here is the create. So it's that is something kind of how do I say one of the predefined things in view, which says the create whatever behind the create or the value of the create in this case is this function will be run when the view instance is created. That means when view instance is created, it will try to fetch the data. So almost like prefetching. Um, for example, if you want to display a list of class on your page and you need to retrieve that from the server, you probably want to do the fetch when you're creating the view instance. And then you can get the results back, you can do the pass, or you just store, say, the JSON returns to the store dot product, which is your, the store is just the view instance and product is one of its data properties. You can store the, what you have returned from the server to your properties. Okay, and then you can do whatever you did in the first coursework and using data now store dot product. Okay, and that's it. And so that's a link if you want to learn or know more about fetching. That's a that goes to the the MDN, which is the Mozilla Development Network. There's a good docu and document on how to use fetch, which is what we need to do for the coursework. And okay, yeah. 